The next day, it was Barrow's turn to hold overall command, and he began to move his forces out of both camps just after sunrise. He had the men from the larger camp cross the river and drew them up in battle order straight away. And he had the men from the other camp join them and form up so they all made a continuous line facing south. He posted the Roman cavalry on the right wing directly by the river next to the infantry and in a straight line. He reduced the gaps between the maniples more than usual and increased the number of ranks within the maniples until their depth was several times greater than their length. He deployed the Allied cavalry on the left wing and posted light armed troops in front of the entire army and some way ahead. Including the Allies, there were about 80,000 foot and a little more than 6,000 horse. Meanwhile, Hannibal sent his Balearic slingers and his spearmen across the river to take up a forward position. Then he led the rest of his men out of the camp and across the river at two places, and he had them take up positions for battle. On the left wing by the river, he posted the Iberian and Celtic cavalry facing their Roman counterparts. Next to them, he placed half of the Libyan heavy infantry then the Iberian and Celtic infantry, then the remaining half of the Libyan infantry. Then on the right wing, he deployed the Numidian cavalry. So far, the entire army formed a single straight line. But next, he led forward the Iberian and Celtic infantry units in the center and had the others link up with them in a staggered line until he had formed a crescent-shaped bulge which entailed thinning the ranks in the formation. His intention was to keep the Libyans in reserve with the Iberians and Celts bearing the brunt of the fighting. 